morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are, whenever you're watching this, this is Floating in Dreams. Today we are going to be ranking my top 10 favorite drugstore foundations. Welcome to everybody watching today, thank you so very much for joining me. Today we are going to be ranking my top 10 favorite drugstore foundations. I did a video like this in May with my luxury and high-end foundations, and I said in that video that I would do a video with drugstore foundations as well. And I was a little bit nervous because I was like, do I have 10 favorite drugstore foundations? And then as I was going through reviews that I had written on my blog, I was like, oh wait, I do. <laughs> so I, I, it's just one of those things that I hadn't really registered and drugstore foundations can be very difficult for me. So I'll also make sure to sort of talk a little bit about that. That definitely goes into the ranking here today. But because of this video, like conceptualizing this, I kind of did a thing. So I'm going to tell you about what I did and what the plan is when it comes to drugstore foundations towards the end of the video, so definitely stay tuned. In case you're new here, hi, my name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands. I love coming on here to chat about eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice reviews, and getting the use out of my makeup. And because I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, I do myself a snow angel. So if you'd like to join the little snow angel club I've got going on here, then please hit subscribe and join my little family here. Ranking my drugstore foundations. And before we get to the ranking, there are three honorable mentions that I need to make. These are foundations I A, no longer own, or B, are discontinued, which is why I feel I cannot really put them in the ranking, because I wanted to focus on products I still have in my collection. Um, but the three foundations that I still rate really highly, but that may be difficult to have, get or that I no longer have, are the Catrice HD Liquid Radiance Foundation. So Catrice, for a very hot minute, did a foundation that, like the HD Liquid is still around, but they did one with red lettering that was called the HD Liquid Radiance. I still have mine because it is my favorite foundation by Catrice to date. Like I said, it was around for a hot minute. They discontinued it within a year. And it was, it took them ages to come out with my shades. I think it was like the next update after they launched it that they came out with a lighter shade. So I like that a lot better than any of the foundations they've come out with since. The True Skin I like okay. I don't love it and I struggled finding my shades because Catrice doesn't stock all of the shades in store. So you can't find testers and you have to go online to find everything because over here they say they don't have enough space in the stores to stock the entire foundation range, which kind of defeats the point of having a very more inclusive shade range for sure. But yeah, Catrice HD Liquid, uh, HD Liquid Radiance my favorite Catrice foundation, I did want to mention it here. And then two foundations I no longer own, one I decluttered, which is the L'Oreal True Match in the shade 1.1N. One of my favorite drugstore foundations, it's just mine got old. And I was like, you know, I wasn't really getting the use out of it. I have other drugstore foundations as you see today that I just prefer a little bit more by now, but I still rate it very highly as a good everyday foundation. Plus it's got a pretty good shade range because it was one of the very first drugstore foundations that came in a neutral shade, which I loved, which is why I still wanted to mention here. And then the other one that I don't have anymore is because I used it up and that's the Maybelline Fit Me. So I wanted to make sure that I also, because I know these are quite popular foundations to talk about so that you know why I don't have them here. The Fit Me foundation I completely used up and I just haven't felt like repurchasing it ever since because so many new things have come to the market and I do want to try those things as well. So yeah, the Maybelline Fit Me, I think I had it in shade 110, so 110 was a pretty good shade match for me and I did really like it. It's just that I prefer other drugstore foundations. So yeah, let's get to this ranking. Number 10 is a foundation I tried this year and I liked it a lot more than I thought I was going to because it's the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. And a lot of people were saying, oh, this is very full coverage and full coverage to me usually means matte, cakey, mess, very not great for my dry skin. I haven't mentioned that, but I have dry dehydrated skin that can be a bit sensitive. And because of this like very fair complexion, shade ranges can be a struggle at the drugstore as well. But yeah, I have this in the shade Fair 120, good shade match. And I actually didn't hate this. I was, I was going to try this thinking, I'm going to dislike this so, so much because it's full coverage. And then I was like, it's actually quite hydrating on my skin. It is perhaps, 
just a little bit more coverage than I like to go for. I like something more lightweight, more dewy, um, and this is definitely not that. So for what I prefer, it isn't perfect, which is why it's all the way at the bottom of this ranking. But if you're looking for a good full coverage foundation at the drugstore that isn't dry and cakey, then definitely give this a whirl. Just don't use too much. I only use like a pea-sized amount of this and that gave me the coverage that I wanted. So I can manipulate this to make it work for myself and that's why I still rate it quite highly. So I did like this a lot more than I had expected, which is why it did deserve a place in the ranking. And then we have the Essence Pretty Natural Foundation. I have this in the shade 020 Neutral Alabaster. So when it comes to Essence Foundations, this is actually the one that is my favorite Essence Foundation. They have come out with other things since then, but I haven't liked all of it all that much. This shade is a pretty good match for me, and I do really like the way this texture sits on my skin. I kind of keep Essence Foundations around so that I always have one on hand, but they're never like my true, true favorite foundations, I feel. So that's why this is in the number nine spot. I kind of keep it around just so I always have an Essence Foundation so I can use it if I do a full face of Essence or Catrice or whatever. Like if I chat about these things, I like to keep it on hand, but this is not something I'll reach for every single day, which is why it's in the number nine spot. Then next up, and this foundation is the instigator of the thing I'm gonna tell you about before we finish this video, after we've done the ranking. Bourgeois Healthy Mix. I was conceptualizing like which 10 drugstore foundation I love, and I was like, Bourgeois Healthy Mix. So this is actually the reason why I actually <laughs> went into the drugstore. I've mentioned this in several videos. I've been going to drugstores in the past couple of weeks and months to see if there are any new exciting releases. And this is the reason why, because I was looking for this foundation. But for me, the shade was never right. So this game, uh, like the lightest shade it used to come in was 51 vanilla, but they've extended the shade range. Here's the thing. I can only find the extended shade range online, but I've now bought it in 50 Rose Ivory. It still looks a little bit too dark, but it looks a bit more peachy than pinky toned, I feel. But it comes in even lighter shades now. I believe there's like a 05 light porcelain, which they've never done before. So I just wanted to update you on that. And when I swatched this on the back of my hand, I was reminded of how lovely this formula is and how much I like it. So. I'm definitely happy that I've put this back in my collection. I decluttered it a couple of years ago because I felt the shade was just far too yellow. Very curious to see what this shade will do. Whether it's still a little bit dark, maybe it's a good summertime foundation. We'll see, but yeah, this is the reason why I've been investigating what's out there in terms of drugstore foundations because I was looking for this and then I, it, I'll tell you more about it in a minute because it instigated a whole thing. Then NYX Born to Glow is my number seven foundation in today's ranking. This is in the shade Porcelain. It's a really good shade match for me. I tried it though when the weather started to become a little bit warmer and I felt it was a little bit slipping off my face and I have dry skin. So if you have super dry skin, this will work for you. This is going to be a perfect wintertime foundation for me for sure. It is going to just Mm. on dry skin. This is lovely. If you have very oily skin, you may want to stay away from it. Um, but yeah, this was lovely. I was very impressed with it. It is easily one of the best drugstore foundations I have tried in the past year so far. As you'll see in a minute, I want to try some more. Shade Match was actually really good. I think I did a video where I did apply this so you can see it going on. And it's just, it was a great one. It was a great one. I really enjoyed it. It's a good drugstore price point foundation for sure, which is why it's in the number seven spot because I do have some other things I like more. Something I like more, Flower Beauty Light Illusion. This is in the shade L1 Porcelain. This is the lightest shade they do here. There is a lighter shade, L0 Shell, but it's not for sale in the Netherlands. And actually, I think Flower Beauty has been pulled from the market where I live. It was around for like a hot minute, uh, but I can no longer find this in stores. It's been taken down from the Kruidvat website where I did purchase this. And I've kept this around be just because I love the formula. For my dry skin, this formula was absolutely stunning. I have found out that this is a dupe 
a great dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. If you want that foundation at a drugstore price point, this. And this shade is a great match for three, uh, shade three in the Charlotte Tilbury Foundation as well, I have found. I am going to the UK in August, so I hope that they're still around there and that I can pick up the lighter shade so I can like mix them together because this is a foundation. I just, I love the formula so much that I've kept the shade that is too dark for me in the hopes that I can buy my right shade and I can make it work because this, this is, this is worth hanging on to for me. So yeah, in terms of formula, I rate this so, so highly that I felt it warranted keeping it around. Usually when a foundation is too dark, I tend to chuck it, but I have found over the years that also a foundation that is super light on me can make me look a little sickly. So that's why I sometimes go for something that's a little bit deeper. And since this is good, such a good shade match for the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Beautiful Skin Foundation that I have in shade three, that I actually got in a shade that I knew was going to be a bit dark for me because none of the lighter shades came in a neutral undertone. So I went in something that had a better undertone than actual shade and that I felt was actually a good thing. So now I have a renewed appreciation for this shade, but I still want to pick up that lighter shade from the UK if I can. And then we have L'Oreal's Freshwear Foundation. This is in shade 20 Ivory in the number five spot. This is one of my all-time favorite drugstore foundations. It is a dupe for the YSL All Hours Foundation I have found. I own that, I feel they're very similar, and this shade is a really good match for me as well. It is just a little bit too heavy duty for what I like on the daily, so that's why it's not like my number one favorite foundation, but if you want something that's long wearing, still hydrating, not cakey, gives you really good coverage, this is like medium to full, then it definitely works, but I prefer something more lightweight, which is why it's in the top five, but I have four other picks here that I like just a little bit better. Something that I like better, I'm not sure, is this foundation drugstore? I feel it is because it is a dupe for a much more expensive foundation. This is the Zoeva Authentic Skin Foundation. What shade do I have it in? It's in 030 N Ambition, and this is a great dupe for the Anastasia Luminous Foundation. I have did it, I've done a video where I put them side by side. They wear the same way, they look the same way on my skin. It's a really good foundation, which is why it had to go up here. This is one of the best, like more affordable. Is it truly affordable though? It's like 20 euros. When then again, over here, L'Oreal has launched a foundation that is 25 euros. So I do feel it fits into that category for that reason. So, but it is definitely more on the higher end of drugstore, I'm not gonna lie, but I did really like it. It re works really, really well for me. Lovely texture, lovely formula, but perfect for dry skin mainly. If you have oilier skin, you may wanna stay away. Another great moisturizing foundation is going to kick off the top three, and this is the Kiko Milano Insta Moisture uh, Foundation. This is in shade 1R. It has a pump that has a lock, which I didn't know about, so now my, my, my mechanism is a bit broken because I kind of was like pushing it, and then it, I was like, why is there no product coming out? And I almost broke it, but it's still fine. I can still use it. So the mechanism is a bit finicky, but in terms of shade, it's... Perfect. This is a great year-round foundation for me. It is hydrating. It's like light to medium buildable coverage, which I prefer. It is dewy enough for my taste. It looks great on the skin. It is a little bit more affordable, but if you find it too expensive, wait around for a sale because this is from Kiko's regular line and they often do like buy so many products, get so many products for free or like 30% off deals. You don't have to pay full price for Kiko products for sure. And this is just, it's such a lovely formula. I really enjoyed it when I finally put it to use and it's definitely one of my favorite drugstore foundations. Another favorite, this is a product I actually put in my yearly favorites, I think of 2020, and it's the ColourPop Pretty Fresh um, Tinted Moisturizer. This is in shade Fair 4N. And I repurchased this because mine went bad. It started to look really funky in the tube. So when I did a, my last ColourPop order, I did get a new one because it was like, I don't want to be out of this. And if something goes bad or if the shade is wrong, whatever, and I, I repurchase it afterwards, 
I know it's a favorite. And the reason why I rank this so highly is because this is the only thing I've tried at the drugstore that truly has that tinted moisturizer, very dewy texture that I love in so many of my more high-end foundations, but that I just feel the drugstore doesn't do. I find a lot of drugstore foundations just focus on like the medium to full coverage, which is just not my kind of life. It doesn't look right on my skin. For my dry skin, this is also the only ColourPop foundation-like product that I've tried. I've tried the no filter, filter. I've tried the pretty fresh actual foundation. Didn't like both. This coverage, exactly what I need. Texture, what I need. The shade is exactly perfect for what I like as well. So the pretty fresh tinted moisturizer. If this goes bad, I'll just buy another one again. I just know it. And finally, if I'm so dedicated to trying to use up a foundation, it needs to go into the number one spot, the Ordinary's Serum Foundation. Now, this is not necessarily a brand you find at the drugstore, but it is very affordable. It's definitely not a very expensive foundation. I have mine in shade 1.1N. I was trying to use it up last year. I'm trying to use it up again this year. I have about, it's like right around that black stripe. So I have just a little bit of this left and it got too dark for me, which is why I had to stop using it. When like January hit, I was just too pale. It didn't go with my complexion anymore, but now that it's summer and I'm getting a little bit more color back into my skin, I know that I can start using this up and really commit to it. This is possibly one of the best, very lightweight, very watery foundations I have ever tried. This is like water on the skin. That's all it is, but it does have the pump. The only thing I don't love about it is that you can't travel with this because this just kind of locks into place and it could make a mess in your makeup bag quite easily, but it does have a plastic bottle. It's very small. And I just really, really like this. And especially because I committed to using it up at the end of last year, I use this almost every single day and I still wasn't sick of it. I actually regretted it getting too dark. And I'm so, so glad I get to go back to it again. Really lovely formula, 1.1N is my perfect shade in this foundation. So I absolutely love it. So that's why this, I know I'm going to be sad, but I think this may be worth a repurchase when it's gone. But then, I told you I did a thing. I just felt, as I was preparing for this video, that I hadn't, save for the NYX and the e.l.f., I really hadn't tried that many drugstore foundations in recent years. I had really been trying a lot more high-end foundations. And I was like, you know what? You know what could be a fun video to do? is to buy some new foundations that you've never tried before and try them. Which is why when I was looking for that bourgeois foundation, I was so disappointed that at my local drugstore, I couldn't find much that I was very excited for. So I still wanna do a 10 foundation roundup review once I've tried 10 foundations with some of the things I was already trying this year. And that will be a mix of all of the things I've tried so far. There were some things in there from like brands I would already bought last year that I didn't get around to really reviewing yet. So making my way through those, but this is an, at the same time sort of like an announcement video. I have eight here though, because I do have the healthy mix as well, but that's just another shade. So maybe I need like one or two more. So if you have any recommendations of foundations that I can try, granted it needs to be from a place that ships to the Netherlands. I got all of these online, same for the healthy mix. I got it from Notino and Lico, Lico, Lico. I believe Notino is based in Poland and Lico is, I believe, Scandinavian, Swedish possibly, maybe Norwegian, I'm not entirely sure, but it's Scandinavian for sure. And there I found foundations and like base products from brands that I haven't seen here yet or in shades that I can get but also some brands I had never tried before. So I thought maybe I can just like do an overview of like drugstore foundations of brands I've never tried and try them that. So let's start with brands that I can potentially buy in the Netherlands, but that I wasn't able to find my shades for. So the two things I got that I couldn't find in my shade here were the Bourgeois Healthy Mix um, tinted Beautifier Radiant Glow Hydration Foundation. This is like a tinted moisturizer, but then from the Healthy Mix line. 
I do have to keep the cap on because this has so much air that it just keeps spouting product, which is a bit problematic. I've got it in shade one fair, and this is the only shade my drugstore doesn't carry from this line. They have this entire range, save for the lightest shade. Story of my life. Then I have the Rimmel Kind and Free, and this I got in the shade Rose Ivory, which Rimmel being Rimmel, I don't know why but this just looks way too dark and it's definitely not pinky. So I'm a bit nervous about that, but this is currently making its making the rounds a little bit on TikTok I've seen. Um, so this is their moisturizing skin tint foundation. I wanna try more skin tints from the drugstore. So I hope that the texture, which did feel lovely also from the bourgeois, I've swatched all of these things already, so I have sort of an idea. Um, but yeah, the shade does worry me a little bit, but good one to try. And then I have some products here from brands I have heard of, but that I've never tried. And these are brands that are not readily available over here. I think two of the brands are like more Scandinavian and one of them is Polish. So I have EX1. This foundation was hyped up quite a few years ago by beauty bloggers at the time. I bought shade two and it seems to be a pretty good shade. It's the Invisiwear Liquid Foundation. Looked like something I might like, can't wait to try it. I believe that's a Scandinavian brand. And then I have two foundations from Lumen. Lumen? Lumine? I'm not sure how to pronounce it. This is, I believe, a Swedish brand. Um, and I bought their Blur Longwear Foundation in shade Zero Light Ivory, which I think is too mattifying for my taste, but again, all for the channel. And then we have the Natural Glow Lick Fluid Foundation in the shade Light. And this is, I'm predicting, another favorite. It looked very luminous, very glowy, exactly what I like, and the shades seem to be pretty good too. And then a brand that someone in the comments to, like told me about, so that's how I know about them, and it's Eveline Cosmetics. And Eveline Cosmetics is a Polish brand, and they were doing some lovely things. I just, I struggled figuring out my shades in all of these, because I can only buy them online. So I bought the Tea Tree... I'm not sure what this is called. Mattifying Protective Antibacterial Foundation in the shade Porcelain 01. I was hoping this could be like the tea tree BB cream that the body shop used to do, which was one of my favorites. It swatched nicely. It does smell heavily of tea tree. And I'm not sure whether I'm going to like the mattifying qualities this has, but I mean, the Fit Me that I tried and loved from Maybelline was also their mattifying formula and it was fine on me. So I have high hopes for this one. And then I have their Better Than Perfect Moisturizing Covering Foundation in shade 01 Ivory. Again, I think the shade was a little bit dark for me, but the formula seemed really lovely. So I can't wait to try that. And then we have the Evelyn um, Wonder Match Vegan Friendly Oil Free Second Skin Effect 24 Hour Set and Finish. Whatever, it's a foundation and I believe it's more hydrating as well. I have this in the shade 16 Light Beige, which is one of their newer shades, and online it looked very peachy, and then I got home and I was like, mm, maybe a little bit too dark and yellow. So I'm not sure whether I got the right shade um, because it was very difficult to see, but it does feel like a very nice texture. So I've never tried any of these brands, say for Rimmel and Bourgeois, those I've tried before, but those other brands are completely new to me. Like I said, these are eight. I like grouping things together in groups of 10. So if you have another two recommendations of things that I can try for this video, then please let me know in a comment down below. I will be traveling to the UK at the end of August. So if it's something I can pick up in the UK, then definitely let me know where I need to like go and find it or if you have a link for me to like find it online, then I can figure out whether I can order something because I would love to like find, I don't know, if maybe there's like a Croatian makeup brand that I've never tried before and I can try that if I can buy it. So, because apparently I've now found Lico and they seem to be doing quite a lot of things as well. Say, same for Nutino. They seem to be doing a lot of things that I didn't think I could buy, so. Fingers crossed I can find your recommendations. And then towards the end of the year, when I've tried all of the foundations I wanted to try so far, I'm going to be doing a video where I'm going to be rounding up this uh, drugstore review and then I, I will have tried all of those things. So that's sort of the plan to do that maybe like December, January-ish. I mean, it's going to take a while for me to get to like 
eight to ten foundations for sure. Um, but yeah, I thought that this could be a fun video to do because I do want to do my due, due diligence and try out more drugstore foundations for you. So let me know in a comment down below what you want to see me do. In the meantime, thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos a week, so if you'd like to stay tuned for more. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye!